Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Press Play Central 101. My name is Chris, and today joining me, we have... Oh, I guess I'll go first, Brayden. And Keelan. And this is, I think, our first video ever, other than, like, my stress and stuff, where we have three of us in here. But this is going to be fun, and I'm really excited to see how this goes. So today, we're going to be starting off by taking a look at Jeff Gladney a fifth-year senior from Texas Christian, who is listed unofficially at 5'11", 183. I've seen him listed bigger than that. I've seen him over six foot before. Would not be surprised if he does hit the six foot mark. And I do think he's probably a little bit heavier than the 183 number two. But we'll see. We'll get all those numbers later this week in Indianapolis at Lucas Oil. Uh, still have either of you guys, whoever wants to go first, can. Uh, seeing any Gwenny tape or heard anything about him so far? Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of him. I have watched a decent bit of tape on him. I have not watched any of him. I haven't watched any TCU games. I don't know. I don't know a single thing about him. Cool. Yeah. So... This is, like normal, my first time watching this tape as well, so this should be really interesting. We're going to be taking a look at Purdue, Texas, and Baylor for you guys. Oklahoma, he didn't really do a whole lot, so we're kind of going to skip that one for now. And if you guys want to watch that in the West Virginia game on your guys' own time, definitely feel free to do that, but I don't want the video game too, too long. Uh, so, in terms of injury history, we have a uh, minor foot injury in October of 18, not really a huge deal there, and good character as well, which is fantastic to see. So, uh, do you have guys that have a preference which one to start with? Purdue, Texas, or Baylor? I don't care. I don't care either. Well, we'll go with Purdue. Also, for those of you guys wondering, we've been on a little bit of hiatus lately because I've been doing a lot of NFL content and I've been doing more written reports. Uh, for those of you guys who are Lions fans and have been checking out the LP site, uh, I've been doing quite a bit there. I have another preview coming out soon as well. Uh, so that's why we haven't been recording too many videos lately. Okay, so he should be at the top of the screen, number 12. Also, if either of you guys need something rebound or paused or whatever, let me know. Alrighty. Cool. Okay. Just cool with the stem. It's nice to see. Oh, that's fun. So what I like about this play is. He sees this run developing in the backfield, as his eyes in the backfield throughout the course of the play. And then actively tries to get around the blocker. Oh, that was a nice quick feat. Okay, next flip. Okay, and again, same thing. We've already talked a little bit about his physicality. That's been the one thing that stood out to me so far. Boom, reads the screen real nice and quick, and attacks. Good tackling for him. Okay, Blixer. Nice, so you get to see a little bit of pass rush potential as well. And the other thing, too, is a lot of these plays, like again, you see it here, too. Uh, he's one of the main communicators in this back end as well, which is really nice to see. Again, communication aspect is yeah. really strong there. Ooh. 
He does a real nice job. Okay, lined up on the inside receiver this way. Same thing, once again lined up on the inside receiver. I think it's Rondale. I like his patience on this play. Really good to see him read this concept. And then attack down here once they should, once they transition. It's good zone skill. Playing off that time, so he's played both hard and soft coverage as well, which is pretty cool. Nice physicality. I like how he really attacks this block. Boom, nice first punch. That was a nice catch. Racing Hopkins made the top 10 ends in this class also. Did they really flag that? Are you kidding? I mean, he's not... Yeah, that's a terrible call. I mean, he never turned around, but... He kind of was at the very end, but... Oh, I like the patience. Oh, nice. Nice. I love that. What I like about this play, though, is from the very beginning of this, he's on, he, they have him lying in the box, and the power is set, so they have him playing the run. But then he's able to, to adjust to that pass, and then breaks back. To cut it off underneath. Well, obviously not the best of throws, but I really like how he starts this play off in front, and then is able to transition into that deeper coverage. Anything you guys wanted to point out about that? Either of you? Uh, uh, it was a very uh, nice catch. Yeah, I mean, he basically did everything. I think the athletic ability is doing a pretty nice job in terms of keeping up with receivers as well. Yeah. Very interesting. So, for those of you guys who are familiar with Michigan football in particular, uh, one thing that we hear a lot is the crossing routes to be the man coverage. Very, very common strategy, uh, everything like the, that. So what you're going to see here is TCU playing some man coverage, Purdue trying to exploit that with those Jags. But what I like about this play is other than this guy coming free, there's probably some sort of transition that didn't happen there. Uh, they're doing a really nice job of keeping both of these flat receivers covered. So he probably should have come down a little bit harder on him or 
he probably should have stuck to him. But they're doing a really nice job of keeping those flat receivers covered, and him too, and Rondale, uh, and limiting those underneath options and preventing the quarterback who has to scramble in this play from hitting those draft targets on third and short. Nice stance as well. Tackle? Oh, okay, or hit. I mean, I guess that works. He's going to test very, very well. Yeah. Another blood play. Definitely like to see his potential in that area for him to stick him in the slot. Love the patience. If this were an actual route concept, he's doing a nice job of not overcommitting inside or out. Nice concept. That was a great play by that whole left side of the secondary. I love the way that they take this bunch this bench concept. There's a bench concept. Yes, okay. I love the way that they take this bench concept here. 30 comes down underneath and then you had the you had the backside defender and Gladney here taking on that, that back corner coverage. That's really, really nicely done. It almost leads to a sack. Nice communication. Didn't help the other side, but that was a really nice job on their part, at least. Whoops, too far back. And you see him transition this coverage. He points this out right at the snap point, too. Telling this linebacker to read the short route. He's going to take the guy over the top. And he did just that. Easy transition, great communication. Well done. Awesome. So, we'll start with Brayden. What are your thoughts on this game? He's just very, very solid, you know. Uh, he's versatile with his coverage. He's able to play off. He's able to play. He just play, play press. Very good at communicating, and he is. He even showed some ball skills. Keelan? Yeah, what Brayden said. I, I like his versatility. I like his ball skills, and he's super athletic. Like. Like I said earlier, he's going to test extremely well. Apparently last offseason, he ran a 4 3 4 40. Oh, man. So I, I'm excited to see how he tests next week. It was, a, it was a really solid game from him. So is there any areas that either of you guys want to see him improve on going into the next two games? Uh Yeah, I, I don't know why I was paying half attention to it because my, my finger is just bleeding like I'm extremely hard and I'm trying to figure something out about it. Well, uh, what I noticed, I'd like to see him have his head on a swivel a little bit more when the ball's getting thrown his way. Okay, so ball striking? Mm-hmm. Very cool. Okay, nice base allows me to gain the back barrel smoothly.
Oh, he tried to pass down the safety. Okay, and the safety was... Okay, yeah. Okay, now. I love the way he attacks the screen. Same thing. Yep. The, he has really good football IQ from that standpoint. We just really get to see him, especially in these bunch of sets. Like, you see 3 by 0 here? He knows the screen's coming. He just launches right in to attack that play. Very nice. That looked like a push off. Yeah. Yeah, I tend to agree with you there. Mm -hmm. Johnson's like 6'5". Not much you can do there. The one thing I will say is, going back to this play, I wonder how much better he could have enforced boundary. But in all honesty, he did about as much as he could do at this point in the play. And it's not really until you get the push off that he creates that space. I like how tight he is on that next play, though. That's really good coverage. Get off. Okay, nice job taking outside. Nice job getting there for the tackle. Whoever thought this uniform, this TCU uniform combination was a good idea, should be fired. <laughs> So this play intrigues because he has a really nice job here of recognizing that this is going to be a run play, especially an outside run play when he sees the blockers. So he just undercuts this receiver who takes on that mid defender. And he has an easy lane for this tackle. This forces him out of bounds. Nice. Terrible this tackle. Nice patience there. Seen to the receiver and scramble drill. Good hand usage at the top of the route. Oh boy. Chris, can I run the dish? being outside leverage against the outside zone play. Chris, you want me to wait for the dishwasher? This whole TCU secondary seems to be doing a pretty good job across the board. Well, honestly, I'm playing nice tight coverage. Nice blitz. Ooh, okay. I like the way he sells this cover, this press play first. I don't know what I just did. I like the way that he sells this this coverage on this play. Boom, right. This ball is being snapped. Sells the and then right at snap point is when he attacks underneath. He uses his speed really nicely to get to the backfield in a hurry. This catch by Duvernay. Another Jack eligible player along with Colin Johnson. Both these receivers. 
Base my champ within this game range here if eligible. I love his quick feet. Either of you have any issues with this play? There's not much you can really do. This guy is like half a foot taller than you, first of all, and he just he stays with him nicely and just a nice cut by Johnson and not much you can really do there. Bring anything from you? I mean, I would have liked I would have liked him to not give up that inside leverage so yeah, easily, yeah. but. That was a lot better. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> and you really get to see the arm length, too, right? We talked earlier about his measurables, his specifically his height. And he does a really nice job of, again, Colin Johnson being a longer athlete. He just gets his hand right in front of that ball. That is really a ball tracking, first off. Uh, but... Also, you really get to see his physical tools shine there. That was nice. He has a great job in forcing this boundary, too. Forcing the quarterback, Ellinger, to make it a tough throw. He just not able to. Nice physicality. Okay, transitions. Okay. And then a little bit softer, which is nice. Nice transition. Oh, yeah. I like how he was originally on this underneath the receiver here. And then when he slips, when he starts to move back into that deeper coverage to take away that to take away Colin Johnson's deeper route. That wasn't even technically his responsibility from the beginning of the play. He just ended up adjusting. That was a nice two foot catch, though. Laying him up on both sides as well, so he's not a boundary corner, he's a shadow corner. That was incomplete. He landed out of bounds. Who's the back side? Ouch. I don't know whether that would be on him or the safety or someone else who ended up moving over. My guess is that that's probably on Gladney, but, or it was just a really bad coverage call, but that was... Good grief. That's a running back. So no, that is not on him. It should be on a linebacker. I'm just... Yeah. I 
I think it was on the safety because the safety went in on him too. Yeah, it's safety, I think. Okay, so. No concerns about the tackling for me. Nah, I'm good. Nice outside. That'll do. Oh, that was great coverage from the other guy. Chris, you want me to wait for the dishwasher? I can't see. They're doing a really nice job of. Uh, Texas is receivers are doing a really nice job of utilizing their hands, specifically that swim release and getting over to the top of him, which is one of his biggest issues I've found so far. Oh. Am I the only one that's impressed by that? Wait, what? Did y'all see what he did on this play? Great motor. I mean, that's cool. It's not even so much the motor necessarily as it is just the straight line speed. Like, Devin Duvernay is probably going to run, what, 4 or 5? Probably. Maybe even slightly faster than that. He's, like, clearly outrunning him. Oh, that was beautiful. I love the way he defends these screen passes. Six back to let the guy underneath take the block. Bam. Easy. Awesome. And nice tackle again. Oh. Trade center, there is Darren Drager, Pierre Lebron, and Bob McKenzie. And he has three equally riveting. Oh, is that throw? Oh. Um. Yeah, that's on offense. Good grief. He basically just pushed him in the neck. Yeah, I'm gonna call that pi. That was much better boundary enforcement. I love the way he defines this area here, just inside the red zone too. But what I really want to point out here is the way that he realizes this inside coverage. He lets Johnson get outside, and then there is no way that this quarterback is putting the ball in between uh, Glenny and the, and the boundary. Especially at this point in the play when he gets about the five, there is zero room there. And he's forced to essentially throw this out of bounds. That is fantastic boundary enforcement. Nice break. Same thing. He is aggressive as heck in those screens. Ooh, what a play by the other corner. Again, though, man, I just... He gets... Even if it's to the outside, that happens a little bit too much. He just... He, he lets him get... A, get past him over his face with his hands a little too much. Nice transition. That was beautiful. That should have been a stack. Love the way he passes that that underneath receiver off to take the deeper defender or the deeper receiver. Well done. Again, great reaction. Boom. Sees this receiver take the safety or deep corner and attacks downhill. Oh, man. Okay. Easy pick. That probably could have been picked too. See, 
Não tem. That time they learned. Should have done that on the last play. This is the same kind of stuff they beat him with on that touchdown play earlier. Except this time, the linebacker takes the running back out of the backfield. That was great coverage by Glenny at the end. That's not a touch in the NFL. I was in college. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, that is perfect hand placement. He does a great job, well, first off, of getting his hands in the chest pad. But look at where his head is as well on this play. And then right in with the middle. That is pristine. Perfect. Oh, man. Pass it off. Nice. Pass it off. There you go. Nice. They're doing a great job this whole secondary, especially Gladney, with these transition coverages. Forcing the scribble drill. Another play that could have been a sack. We'll watch here. Linebacker in perfect position to take this inside cut route. There's this, uh, I'm going to call it a turkey hole window between the corner and the safety here. So Gladney does a great job of backing off and letting the linebacker take the underneath receiver. He ends up dipping out, and he ends up dipping out on almost a rounded bench. That was great coverage. Same thing. Not so much transition, but just excellent job of, of sticking to the respective receivers. Nice. I so. Good. We're still the other half of the field. Oh, that was beautiful. Wow. Oh, my. If that had been caught by anyone. <laughs> oh, man. So first off, again, you get to see this transition. And so playing the curl. First, well, actually, that's more of a hitch because it's five yards. But man, he does such a great job of reacting to this throw in the air. And then, boom, look at the length. That is fantastic vertical. And you really get to see the arm length play. That's him and Okuda, both very similar. Uh, from that standpoint, you really get to see the arm length factor in play on a consistent basis. That's probably three or four times where you've gotten to see his arm length uh, really factor into the play and the result. Nice patience. Great mental discipline. Okay, good zone coverage. I, I really like his patience again. You really get to see that factor. Sticks with the receiver in that shallow zone. And when he moves inside, transitions that coverage to the linebacker. Top notch. Fourth and ten. 
Good coverage across the board. Easy pick. Dang. Well, this time we'll start with Keelan. Your thoughts first. Yeah, I, the ball skills on skin just excellent. Um, I said I wanted to see him, his tracking improve, and I think it definitely did in that second game. So I'm pleased with what I saw. Bring you. Yeah, I mean, uh, one thing I would like to see him improve on in this third game is he had a bit of a tendency to where if a receiver was not necessarily the hands were at the face, but the the receiver was moving across his face, not letting him get past him so easily, whether it was going in or inside or outside. So defending those release moves. In their yeah, coach. defending the release moves, yeah. Cool. Unless it's clearly obvious that that was what he wanted, which is in that case it's different. But uh, these color combinations for TCU are far better. Yeah, I like the black and purple. I agree. Yeah, that that last uniform combination was a disaster. Okay. Definitely playing soft coverage as well, which is kind of cool. Nice patience. I like this camera angle. I was going to put them like this on all the corners. Okay, good. He's doing a really nice job with these transition coverages. Don't get burned. Flexibility. Nice. Really like the quick feet inside here. Nice break. From playing as far off as he was assigned, that's a really nice reaction. Playing inside again. Really aggressive taking on those blocks. Tight coverage again. He's doing a really nice job of staying in base. I think that's the first time I said that the whole video. Nice solid zone. Playing the hard flat.
Nice patience. He's doing a great job in that area. Nice break on that. Come back out. Again with the blitz. Nice. Very nice. Love this play. It does a great job of going around the end. To open up this outside area. He actually draws the double team as the corner on this blitz package. Giving that linebacker an easy shot on the inside flex. That's very well designed and very well executed. Transition, there we go. Good. <laughs> nice inside. Team house, team that inside away. Give up the inside a little bit too easy. He does that, that every once in a while. He does go up the inside a little bit too easily. You talked a little bit that earlier, Brayden. Yeah. yeah. Leverage thing. He doesn't seem to have any real issues keeping up with the uh, keeping up with the athleticism of these Baylor receivers. This patient's not overreacting there. That one looked more of like a trans. Tra that one looked like a like a. What is this word? Like a trade off. That's transition. probably best transition. Thank you. I couldn't think of a damn word. More than he led him across on that play. Right. Nice. Nice that could have been a flag. All right. They're not gonna, I don't think they're going to call that, though. Uh, unfortunately, I don't see it down. Do you guys see a down marker anywhere? I... I can't tell. Cause if what? I don't think I see a flag. Oh, I'm looking for a down marker. Yeah, I don't see what down it is because I was I was gonna say if this is a third down situation, it would make a lot more sense for him to to drop back. But they have three guys there, so if this is like a first or second down, I would have liked to have seen him play harder in the flat instead of, instead of shallow zone. That was nice. That's really good patience. He's doing a nice job in terms of playing that middle ground. Nice athletic ability. Again. Oh dear, Mason probably got poster. That's tough. <laughs> Very nice. That was well defended across the board on this levels concept. Get to see the short, intermediate, deep level. Gladney takes the mid level and uses the target actually. 
great landing extension again to get his hands on the football. Watch the right. Oh. Okay, a little bit late, but it's fine. Nice. Oh, it's nice to call DPI on that. Where? Yeah, I ain't see. I ain't feeling that one. I mean, this is this is obviously uh, all twenty-two angles, so it's kind of hard to see exactly where his hands are. But I don't see the DPI there. Underneath, there you go. Nice tackle. Nice cross. Terrible throw. Watch the there you go. Nice play by the linebacker. Nice defense by that guy in the coming across. Same thing that I was been saying in the past. You let the receiver get past him. Go across his face. Right now, that's the main thing I want to see him get work on. Oh, my. Heard some reps. Please tackle. Just testing out the red zone. Right, right. Like he just got. What? He just kind of got. I. There was a little go back. I think there was a little bit of a just like a subtle push that nobody could see that. Right here, there was a just a little bit enough of a push that was subtle to get Guadney off balance. Excuse me. Oh, nice to find that double move. <laughs> Was that a length issue? That's not him, I don't think. He's at the bottom of the screen on that play. Unless I'm true. Oh, yeah, he yeah, was. You're right. Okay. Yeah, I was like. I was like, if so, he, he, I'm like, unless he shrinked a couple inches in between plays, that isn't him. That was, that was nice. good D. <laughs> so, there we go. There is three games of Jeff Gladney. We'll start with you. And what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, I like it. It's, he's versatile. He can play. Boundary and he can play slot. I prefer him on the outside, but we've seen he can do both. He's he's got a good variation of coverage, and I like his ball skills and his hand usage a lot. Nice, great. 
I mean, yeah, he's very versatile, very athletic. Um, has a lot. Of, he has the speed to just go straight, straight ahead. Like just go st- run, stride for stride with the receivers, and also. Um, but yeah, he also has the physicality and tackling, and the tackling ability. He has a lot of good at football IQ, and yeah, there's a lot to like about him. There, obviously, there's some. There's a couple things he needs to work on, but yeah, he. But yeah, I, I overall I think he he he's a very good corner to put outside put outside in more man than zone. I think he could play zone as well. Hi everyone, it's Natasha from Natasha's So what would you guys say? Either one, you can go first. Uh, what his biggest strength and weakness are? Um, Brain, you go first. It's hard for strength. I'd have to. I would. I just think I would go with natural athleticism, honestly, because it allows him to have be effective with his physicality, but runs. So athleticism for me personally, but in his weakness, I don't. Kn- I I don't necess- I don't think it's necessarily rele- letting people get releases off of him, but it's just he lets people go across his face. So yeah, redirection. Then, yeah, I'm like redirection just because he lets people get across his face a little too much for my liking. Past the, you know, the obvious transitions. Um, yeah. Strength. I think whoever has that TV is blaring. No one's got me. Keeling, you there? Yeah. Sorry. Um, for strengths, uh, obviously, like Brayton said, the athleticism, but I also really like his ball skills and his, like, his way to get his hand on the ball. As I, I don't know how, if I want to, if I can pick, like, one, because I really like his tackling and getting to the ball carrier, especially off the screens like we were talking about earlier. And for Bates' weakness, it's not... I don't think he, he doesn't have, like, a massive glaring weakness. I feel like... Just letting the receivers go on, on his side. I'm 64 years old. I live full-time in my van, which is a Fiat Ducato uh, Maxi. Two gone. Two Was that all? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, these are the 10 tricks that I look for, most, I guess, in corners. For those of you guys who are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, so, I'm going to start with variance of coverage, just as the corner's ability to play hard coverage, soft coverage, man zone, over the top, shallow, deep, flat, all that kind of stuff, uh, and be able to do all of them effectively. So, for me, I'm going to go with a 9. For that, patience and positioning is patience uh, at the line of scrimmage, patience at the top of the route, making sure you, you do all those types of things uh, without overcommitting, and positioning yourself in a way to where uh, you don't necessarily lose uh, too much in terms of getting out of phase, I guess is probably the best way to put it. So, for that, we're going to go with a 9 as well. Discipline and route recognition. This is the area I'm going to take away the uh, the points for the redirection, because I don't really have any hand usage points other than enforcing boundary. So, this is going to be the area we take that away, uh, as well as, like, this, this is also discipline and route recognition, so being able to recognize where receivers are going to go, being able to adjust to those routes, uh, as well as staying disciplined both mentally with your uh, like penalties, as well as physically with uh, your your different types of coverage. So I just I should flip that physically in terms of penalties and mentally in terms of coverage. But for that we're gonna go with the seven. 
Ball tracking and playmaking is pretty self explanatory. That's where nice. you get your receptions, like ability to read plays, like ability to check the ball in the air, all those types of things. I'm going to go for nine. Footwork is also going to be a nine. nine. It could be a little bit improved in uh, terms of uh, backpedal. I want to see a little bit more consistency in terms of hanging straight back rather than angled. And we didn't really get to see too many deep drops as well, which is something I want to see more of. They turned pretty quickly uh, in most instances, so that could be something you want to see a little bit more developing in. Floating motion athleticism is a 10. And so far, pass rushing is a 10. Tackling also pretty easy 10. Enforcing the boundary, we did get to see one or two instances where he didn't necessarily be perfect, and I'm being really tough in that area as well. Uh, so, his nice ability to limit the the tight window throws on the boundary, uh, that's going to be 9. And the miscellaneous intangibles is injury, character, um, anything not covered, if there's any extra notes that I need to bring up, uh, something like that. So I'm pretty good with giving him a 10 there. So I'll let you guys react to my grades while I calculate uh, whoever wants to go first. And you want to do rock, paper, paper, scissors? If you guys I'll, want to give your own, too. I'll just... Um, I haven't seen anything wrong yeah, with I'm, Chris. Um, I tend to agree. Yeah, I'll have to tend to agree as well. Oh, damn it, my finger busted up again. I don't know what's wrong with it. So, 99799 plus 40 plus... Nine is ninety-two. Yeah, that's exactly what I gave him to. I well, gave I him a ninety-two as well. Ninety-two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'd have to tend to agree on that one. Yeah, I did my grades as well, and <clears throat> I got ninety-two for him. So that's cool. Nice. Bring that. You said that sounds about right for you too. Yeah, I, 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 I definitely have him. As the my corner three, so I feel like that makes. He's my corner two right now, but I haven't watched Diggs yet. Yeah, the thing with Diggs is he's almost the exact opposite type of corner that that Glandy is. For those of you guys who didn't see the Diggs video, that was a very fun watch. Uh, whereas, like with Gladney, you get like a lot of the physicality and the run defense, the pass rushing, all those types of things. And you also get to see some of the playmaking and the ball tracking. We got to see his arm length and his uh, ability to make plays on the football. With Dixie, you really didn't get to see that, but he is so mentally sound. He doesn't get beat that often. Uh, excellent zone defender. Probably the best zone defender I've seen in a long, long time. Uh, so, we're almost exact opposites. Glad you need a little bit more in man coverage from Diggs, and Diggs much, much better in zone. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on your, your preference for corner. And Diggs, I don't think, is necessarily as athletic either. He's fluid and smooth, but I don't think that he has necessarily the elite athleticism, uh, especially in terms of speed, that Gladney does. But either way, I think there's a pretty considerable gap between your tier two corners. Whoever your corner two is, Diggs, Fulton, Henderson, Johnson, Gensler, whoever your corner two is, and Okuda. I think Okuda is the clear number one. Do you guys both agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah. With all due respect to the other corners, I don't really see that as subjective. That's pretty clear to most. I have not seen anyone anywhere say that anything other than Okuda's the top corner. Yeah, I agree with you there. Sweet. So, any other final thoughts that you guys would like to add? Maybe I, something I missed. Maybe something that, whoops, maybe something that we hadn't gone over uh, already. Um, nothing I can think of. No, I'm, I'm good right now. Fantastic. Well, Hopefully you guys... Oh, I did want to go over one other thing. So, uh, this is the guy that I ended up mocking to the Lions in the second round of my pre my mock draft. So, from what you guys know about the Lions, 
Braden probably a little bit more so than Keeling at this point. Do you guys like his fit in Detroit? Yeah. I, I, athletic man, very good in man coverage. I definitely like the fit. Keelan? I agree. Yeah, he's great in man. Uh, I think he fits well in Detroit. Fantastic. Well, with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one, learned a thing or two. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this over the course of the next coming days, weeks, and months as we head into the Combine, the Pro Days, and, of course, the Draft in April. Uh, for now, hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and peace out.